What's up guys? Welcome back. I look like a little naked mole rat right now with my little beady eyes because I have everything on except eyeshadow and that is because after how many months I have been building this up and over hyping this palette, we are finally today going to be talking about the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. She is here, she is gorgeous, and she came to party. So as you can probably tell, I have already had one round in the ring with this little lady. And that is because, especially from these high pigment palettes, it's better that I give them a trial run than try and do a first impression for you guys because honestly, it's not that useful. I get on camera and just kind of crash through it, end up with something kind of ugly, and you guys don't get a really valuable takeaway from that. And so I wanted to go ahead and try it out, but I'm gonna go ahead and say you guys, I'm not sure I really learned that much. Over the last couple of weeks, I've had some really lucky days of good makeup, like on camera, but it gave me a false sense of security because I tried this palette yesterday on my eyes and I was like, oh, okay, I don't know where to begin and I kind of still don't know where to begin. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in and we are just gonna start smacking some of this stuff on my eyeballs, see what we end up with. Hopefully it's not every other tutorial on this palette because this has been out for a while, they restocked it. If you guys are new here, you don't know that I've ever hyped this. But anyway, let me just quit jabbering, move you guys in, and we'll start putting this on my face. It on my face, hello. So I, like I said, already have all my makeup on. I like how it looks, so we're probably gonna ruin it. The formula on these shadows reminds me a lot of the ABH subculture palette in that it's highly, highly pigmented, kind of dusty, not very creamy. I think that the main difference in these being high pigmented shades versus something like a Natasha Denona high pigment shade, the best way for me to explain it is probably that in my experience, they blend really nicely, but they don't like to stay put as quickly. And so they don't have that kind of creamy cling to your eyeballs. And I almost wish that I could figure out a way to use my primer in a better way that could utilize these colors but have them stay put a little bit better. You'll see what I mean. So because I have to make some kind of choice, I'm going to go ahead and set my eyes and I'm just going to do it lightly with actually just some translucent powder. Let's talk about these colors. So I was mainly excited because of all of the green shades. This really, if you are an eyeshadow person, I feel like draws a picture for you of what eye look you could get out of it. You've got this amazing charcoal black, and then you've got this kind of spectrum of mattes right here in the greens, and then you have a very intuitive highlight shade for the lid. And then you have kind of the same situation over here, but in a different family of colors. You have these actually very gorgeous wearable mattes and then this unbelievable color, which is actually the title track of the palette. And it is, okay, what is all over my hands? I think that that black shadow like got somewhere. Yeah, I see it. Cool. I found it on my legs last night. So I guess Mr. Salt. This shade is called Gemini and I have now wiped black in it, but this is really the namesake of the palette and I was really excited about that shade too. But typical of the other Melt palette that I have, the 27 palette, there is no bright like brow highlight in here, which is fine. Again, when I tried using this yesterday, I put white on my brow bone and it didn't work with these shades. I think that a beige or a tan is a perfectly good highlight shade for this. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm going to start with a little fluffy brush here from Real Techniques and I'm going to go into Luna, which is a very, I feel like, intuitive transition shade. She's dusty. This is, like I said, it's very ABH. It's got that dusty thing. You're gonna get some fallout, but you also get maximum blendability. I think that it's easy to get lost in these shades being like, oh, they're green and blah, blah, blah. But like literally six out of 10 of these shades make an amazing palette all on their own. Like that is a really beautiful kind of like fall palette. So there's nothing really to fear here. It's just, I want to go ahead and highlight the greens in here because it was what I was the most excited about playing with in this palette. I'm going to take a smaller fluffy brush from Makeup Geek and I'm going to dip that into polka dot right here. And I'm going to just start a little crease here. These are very obedient pigments. They blend so beautifully. Like look at that color payoff. And this is actually a really warm tone. I could have gone in directly with the cooler brown, but I love that I have the option. 
So I did get all of my brushes that I told you guys I was going to order. I got them all in the mail and I've been kind of playing with them. A lot of them are, oops, <laughs> oh, that's a little much. The, uh, a lot of them are face brushes. Tell me down in the comments, guys, what brushes do you swear by or that have you been using for years? Like, do you pay a lot for brushes? Do you think that, you know, you don't have to? Let me know because A, you guys are my eyes and ears on the ground and I really appreciate that. But B, I like to start a conversation down in the comments and maybe you guys can help each other out. So um, I'm going to now go in to Mochi over here. So I'm going to start kind of blending that green shade right here. And what happens with this green actually is that it doesn't really have to stay green it can go kind of like a khaki color if it's on its own. So I'm gonna use it on the lid as well and you'll see that when you put it up next to another shade, like if you put it up next to one of these kind of like more creamy pinky shades, I guess that's pink, what color is that? Copper? It can just go kind of like a flat beige yellow. And I'm just kind of holding my brush really far back, getting that windshield wiper motion going. You can really paint with these. I think that that's really what's fun about them, but you know how like some cars, there's a lot of play in the wheel? Like there's not a lot of play in the wheel on these. If you kind of swipe the brush someplace you don't mean to put it, girl, you're gonna get pigment in that place that you didn't want to put it. So just be mindful. I feel like this builds better and the pigments are less temperamental than the subculture palette. I'm going to go in with Fire OG, which is a very interesting name for a shade, and kind of blend down from here and leave kind of a harder terminus there. Kind of starting to cut the crease. That is thunder. I much prefer thunder to the damn trucks outside. <laughs> and I'm gonna take mochi again, that kind of lighter green, and sort of blend up from that. So next I'm going to go on my lid with kind of a smaller flat brush, if I can find one. So yeah, I'm actually gonna go with Luna right here, which was our initial transition shade, and I'm going to just pat that. And even though this isn't a super pale shade, you can see it draws a really nice stark contrast against the rest of the shade. So I'm not as like missing a creamy beige shade in this palette as I was with the 27 palette. Blendy, blendy, blendy. That really, that was really uncomfortable. I've never done that before. Now my eyes got water. Okay, that's great. All right, that felt terrible. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> going to take Gemini on that same brush and I'm going to dampen it with some of my pretentious water. And I'm going to put that on the center of the lid and get our little highlight going. I did the same thing I always do and sprayed water all over my mirror. <laughs> there really isn't any base pigment to this though. It doesn't have any like small particle color to it. It is literally just a foil. So it's like when you run out of product on your brush, she's not blending. <laughs> she's not going to just keep spreading and, and like she doesn't behave really anything like the mattes. You're gonna probably want to just place this with a brush. Fallout City. So I think that that's really pretty, but it is very, very like fallouty. Oh, I still have shadow in my eye. I don't love that tan color as much as I thought that I was going to, kind of out here. So I'm gonna take like a really tiny little fluffy brush and we're just gonna start kind of building a little bit more crease action there. So I'm going to actually go in with Cupcake right here, this really pretty cool toned brown. And I'm going to start blending out here. Huh. I don't really know how I feel about that either. Hmm. Oh well, we gotta go with it now. It's just, you guys, 
These are super pigmented, if I have not made that clear. They are <laughs> crazy, like I said, an errant brush stroke is going to get the product in that spot. <laughs> Hmm. I'm also going to take the uh, darkest shade right here, this black, which is called Bonnie, and I'm going to kind of cut this right here a little bit. I have so much shadow in this eye, it really is uncomfortable. One of the keys that I've learned to getting a properly cut crease I mean, I don't have hooded eyes, so I don't necessarily like speak for the whole world here, but from what, watching Nessa, it's to look straight forward, not trying to close your eye while you're doing it because you'll get the placement wrong. If you place this directly in your actual crease, it won't look right. It has to be kind of like visually above your actual crease. Learning! And then I'm going to take Fire OG again, which is that cool green, and kind of blend that black up into our local color area here. I also decided, today at least, that I'm not going to put lashes on, I'm just gonna do mascara. I feel like when you go to all this trouble, blendy, 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 you know, get yourself a really cool look going, and then you put lashes on, it like covers up half of my eye. <laughs> it kind of covers up all of my, my hard work. One thing that I want to definitely do is use this shade Goals. And I'm going to use it not really as like an actual inner corner highlight, but I'm just going to kind of like draw it from here up. So this little brush right here from Sigma, this is the pencil E30, it fits perfectly right above your tear duct right there. Picking this uh, the shimmery color up, both of the shimmery colors, picking them up's a little bit difficult. But once you get them on the brush, they do play really nicely. They have a lot of like, you know, high impact payoff. Like, look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous, but I did have to like wet my brush to get here. So I'm going to actually take that a little bit over right here and kind of meet up with our old, old, you know, five seconds ago cut crease. I told you guys I wasn't gonna be able to actually make any decisions today. The decision was we're putting all of them on my eyes. And just because we're doing that today doesn't mean that this is not a user-friendly palette. I really think that, like I said, there are two very distinct sides of this, which I guess is why it's called Gemini. Oh. So there's two very distinct looks that you can get out of this palette with the yellows or with the greens. And so I think that if you were to just kind of like play on one side of the palette, this would not be, I don't know. The strange little dumpster fire that I have on my eyeballs right now. Hopefully we can make something happen here. Even if I look absolutely insane, which I kind of, kind of do right now. I do think that we need a highlight shade, but first I want to go underneath the lash line here. So what are we going to do under the lash line? Last night I tried a few things. I tried actually cutting another crease down here. And I kind of did that this time. Um, I am just going to take my little baby and I'm going to go under my lash line with goals that same shade that same green and then I'm going to kind of probably mirror the Gemini on in the middle we're fuck. I don't know guys but you know I never know it's just hilarious how I like literally tried to prepare myself for this palette by playing with it the day before which I have you know been in the habit of doing more lately but I still don't feel like I really have the lay of the land here. And this is gonna end up looking Halloween y whether I like it or not. And then going in with Gemini, right here. Girlfriend is kind of trying to take over, and that is that is okay. We're gonna have to do some serious cleanup. And then I'm just going to take my little fluffy brush right here again with Mochi. No, I'm gonna go in with Luna and I'm just gonna use that transition-y beige shade, very safe shade, the safest shade in the palette really, and blend underneath that, just underneath it. I don't want to mix those colors together. And I'm going to also take that shade and kind of use it to diffuse. 
but you see it starts to pick the product up like it'll start to pick the black product up off of my skin as I'm kind of trying to blend it and that can start to really drive you crazy because you lose the color impact not because they're layering and because like it's a high pigment shade but because it starts to spread everything around I feel like the shadows if they had a personality or like an intention they're just a little too eager to travel across your face so like I said there isn't a pale shade in this palette the palest one we were working with is that transition shade but i don't want to use like a white right here this is the sofax palette it has a really good amount of great like highlighting neutrals in it gonna go in with that matte beige creamy shade sofax you're just not giving me what i need i think we need to work with someone who is your equal in pigmentation and you know what that means not done I just love how I can rely on these shades to be there for me. So we're going to go in with Aya, which is a yellowy beige. And that, my darlings, is what we're going to highlight my brow bone with. Yes. yes, you know, once you go Natasha, it's hard to kind of go back to makeup. So, I mean, suffice it to say that this is not what many would consider to be a standalone palette. If you have a really deep skin tone, then that shade, that like medium tone shade on me could be a highlight shade for you. If you're pale like me, you'll probably need to pull out another palette to get a highlight shade. Wow, I love the rain, love it. Let's actually go back into the Gemini palette and put Mochi on there because that's actually, I think, where we should have been headed the whole time. I was gonna show you guys that this color can pull kind of like khaki instead of just straight up green. It's so hard to like work this part of your eye. And I'm actually gonna do that on the outer corner here too. This is kind of what I intended originally. I don't love that brown on the outer third. And as a result, we've really lost that kind of like shimmer in the middle. I'm just gonna take my finger and refresh her and get another round of fallout all over my face. <sighs> These shimmers, they leave a little to be desired, guys. This Gemini color is really aggravating because you want it to foil and it's actually really hard to get it to foil. Like you really have to wet the daylights out of it and then pick up a ton of it on your brush to get it to work. And I probably could have just picked up a little more primer and put it in the middle of my eyelids, but there's really not that much product in the middle of my eyelids that isn't that shade. It should just build up, but it's not. <laughs> we have some serious cleanup to do here. Gonna go ahead and just get the actual fallout off of my face, and then we're going to take my MAC powder and actually clean up underneath. And I did my eyebrows, but I haven't done eyebrow mousse yet. And so that'll kind of bring them back into the picture because they have really lost their impact as I've been building these shades up on my eyes. I'm gonna go put some liner on and some mascara and some brow mousse and probably a little bit more blush and I will be right back with you. This is what we ended up with. Um, it's not not scary so maybe this qualifies as a Halloween tutorial. I'm not really sure. I am really excited to continue working with this palette in a way that doesn't utilize every shade in the palette. I felt very obligated to go green with this palette because I have been hyping this thing up for so long on my channel and honestly in my own heart I have been thinking about the greens in this palette being like I wonder what they would look like on me. I wonder if I can make them work or do something really really cool and interesting with them and the answer is probably yes at some point when I have a lot more practice. So this is definitely not the look that I think that I would go for out of this palette on an everyday basis. I would probably stick to this end of the palette. These shades are absolutely unbelievable. Like they're super, super gorgeous. And I would, 
actually wear them on an everyday basis just get an eye look out of these browns and this copper and everything which surprises no one i'm sure but i have not reached for the 27 palette again i feel like those are very dupable shades it's just kind of a big spectrum of all the same kind of medium tonality let me pull that girl out and show you while she's very pretty it's a lot of the same shade value there's no really deep colors here and there's no really light colors here my point is this never really did anything for me. This is $58 that I probably shouldn't have spent on the 27 palette, but this I'm going to actually use again. And it actually, even though it looks like I, you can pretty much only build snake skin <laughs> or poison ivy out of this palette, it actually lends itself really well to everyday looks. So if you guys want me to do an everyday look with this palette at some point, like something that's more wearable, let me know. But TBH, I don't know. The last time I did only the neutrals out of a palette that had really shiny, exciting colors in it, everybody was like, why didn't you use the shiny, exciting colors in it? And so we use the shiny, exciting colors today, guys. I think that now that I've just like kicked all the tires and tried all the colors in the palette, I could tone this down and go for something like a really pretty green smoky eye and just call it a day. So I, I think that this palette is actually really, really beautiful and really worth it. And I'm really glad that I finally, after all these months, sprung for it. And if I'm being totally honest, I I really thought that I was going to be disappointed by this palette, not because I thought it was not going to be good, but just because, like I said, I have spent so much effort building this up <laughs> in my own mind and in my own heart. I really did expect that something about it would disappoint me, and I actually really, really love it. I think it's really beautiful. I think that just be aware that the pigments are going to blend forever. So until you hit this with a setting spray, or unless you want to play directly on top of a primer, which is a high stakes game, then just understand that these are going to continue blending. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? In contrast to something like a Natasha Denona palette, which has comparable saturation of pigment, but once you put it down, it's really the opposite side of the spectrum. It actually has a tough time moving around after you've placed the color. So this has been my uh, probably second impression, I guess is what you would call it, of the Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. Guys, if you enjoyed this, then give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. I am just fumbling on my words right now. I've had too much coffee. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one.